is a God of discretion. If one is stranded, he simply calls unto God, God will show you a new way. He's a God of discretion. People do proposals, you visit consultants, yeah, but there's no better consultancy than the one you, that we can find in Christ. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 12 says, is a God of discretion. Beautiful discretion. Uh, that the word is concluding that there is no other strategy. But don't join them in, in concluding that since this way is no longer flowing, there is no other way. We've stepped into a very lovely season, uh, particularly as a nation, Nigeria, when things will be much more easier. Mm. But it's simply asking for discretion. Simply asking for discretion. Uh, the, 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 the government will be moving funds away from banks. Uh, and so there, there might be liquidity challenge just only in the middle time. Is a God of withy inventions. God of withy inventions. So stretch out uh, is the message for today. Things might not flow the way they used to come uh, in the past because all of us had benefited from that illegality. So uh, I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge and discretion. The, new, uh, the whole King James Version calls it with the inventions. Uh, I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of with the inventions. Uh, I, I find out the knowledge of new things, discretions, where people are giving it up I always will find a way out. So if there's anything we're asking for today, wisdom. Wisdom to do better in this season is a very beautiful season. Uh, it's a time for personal discovery, corporate discovery, and all manner of discovery. And uh, you shall not be left out in the name of Jesus. Stretch out your boundaries. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 2 and 3. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 2 and 3. In the New King James Version, it says, Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spear. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes, for you shall expand to the right. And to the left. Amen. And your descendants will inherit the nations. Amen. And make the desolate cities inhabited. Verse 1 started by break forth into singing. And that's why I said it's a very important requirement for our prayers this morning. Sing, O barren, you who have not born. Break forth into singing. And cry Aloud, you who have not labored, we shied. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. But verse 2 says, you enlarge. Uh, that, that's the spirit that drives us here. Uh, I jokingly said it in the past that I, I grew up as a believer hearing breakthroughs. Uh, they'll say, well, God will give you a breakthrough. God will give you a breakthrough. And I realized that truly is a God who, who brings breakthroughs. But with breakthroughs, you just have to wait until it happens. It just helps you to break through at a point. Uh, then I prayed and prayed and prayed. And I was not patient for breakthrough. I just keep waiting until something unusual happens. So I asked him, I said, God, what if I break forth? What if I break forth? Because he said, if I knock, the door will open. If I seek, I will find. Um, so why not break forth? 
And God says, well, you have whatever you say. So, I, I said to him, I would rather choose breaking fault. So, when there's a conclusion already, when people say, there is nothing that is going to happen, we tell them that the Lord who recognizes breaking fault will make things happen. Will make things happen. So, when people are relaxed and they think, well, we've seen the best. The spirit of break forth will not allow you rest. When, oh, if I stay at this level, it will be said that I did my best. And God will tell you, well, go to verse 2. Enlarge the place of your dwelling. So it's a spirit that gets you to do more, 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 better than where you are now. Uh, you just bought a vehicle and uh, because it's uh, one in town, nobody ever had it. Then you went to sleep. That's not like someone who is conscious of enlargement. If you are enlargement conscious, you finish one prayer, you thank him, then you are again telling him, Lord, I know you can do better. You can do better than what I'd seen. So, it's a call to stretch yourself, do better than what you ever experienced. The message translation puts it this way. Isaiah 54 verse 2 and 3 message. Clear lots of ground for your tent. Make your tent large. Spread out. Think big. Use plenty of rope. Drive the tent pegs deep. You are going to need lots of elbow room for your growing family. You are going to take over whole nations. You are going to wrestle abandoned cities. Mm, the, the aspect of it that I love so much is the elbow room. Elbow room. So that as I'm moving forward, there will be the need to push certain things aside. Think big. Think beyond <laughs> where you are now. Think. Think better. Think. See a more glorious future. Imagine. See opportunities that have been sent your way. So, stretch out your boundaries could mean several things. If it's a call to rediscover yourself, stretch out your boundaries is a call to rediscover oneself. It is a call to return to greatness. Go back to greatness. Go back to greatness. If we do what we're meant to do now, we'll be relaxed when other people are agitated. Return back to greatness. I've had a few of my friends called from uh, Europe recently. And uh, rather than be glad that uh, the Islamic nations are invading their countries. They are agitated and uh, with a bit of anxiety. So they said it's a, it's a strategy to further propagate the spread of Islam. So I told them, I said, why don't you think the other way around? Because there is no facility to put faith into them. Now, those guys are coming because they've been displaced in their countries. Now, as, assuming uh, Christianity had not been weakened in Europe, it would just have been an opportunity to disciple them. But now they're agitated because they went after folly. They went after folly. Now, it's, it's our responsibility to always have a takeover mentality. That if I get to that environment, even if people think nothing is going to happen, the Lord who goes with me will make things happen. So, it's a call to return back to greatness. Number one, call to, rediscover, to rediscover yourself, then return back to greatness. It's a call 
to gain new grants and opportunities. Stretch to gain new grants and opportunities. Uh, it again means to widen your heart or open it up for within inventions, discretions. And uh, lastly, it could mean to overtake from the rear. It could mean to overtake from the rear. Um, it's good to be at the forefront. But sometimes it's very encouraging to see somebody overlapping from the rear. That's like what is going to happen to Nigeria before December. Now, we had, I think we were at number 176 on the Transparency International list before May. Now we are on 136. That means we have overtaken 40 countries. Now, at least one day we'll be below 100. <laughs> we'll be below 100. Things will get better and better and better and better and better. That's... So it's an opportunity to overtake from the rear. Now, our God is a God of hope. We've been on that for a few days now. And there is no situation in life that I cannot turn around. He's a God of hope. There is no circumstance. There is nothing that comes upon a man that God cannot turn around. If you consider the chapter of Isaiah 54 uh, without the other chapters from chapters 40 to 53, you won't get the whole essence of what uh, Isaiah was writing about. The book of Isaiah chapter 40 to 55 represents uh, a total period of captivity when the children of Israel were in Babylon. Uh, and the writings of Isaiah for this season was to offer them hope again. They had contravened a lot of instructions and so they went to captivity. And uh, they were assisting below capacity. They were a great nation, God's own people, special people on it. But they were now in slavery. Things were not happening. This is what led to the call in Isaiah chapter 54. And uh, it started by re rebooking barrenness. Saying now, because you've not been allowed to reflect your true nature. You've not been allowed to function effectively. You've not been allowed to really enjoy the benefits of life. You've been in captivity. Uh, I was discussing with a friend of mine last night. So I, I told him, I said, for instance, if you were earning 10,000 uh, prior to these shakings coming up, and they slice your salary to 7,500, don't you think it has more value than the 10,000 you were earning before? That if we we just will take our eyes off the figure. So I told him, I said, sometimes this year, I was looking for diesel to buy for 200 naira. When I got it for 180, I was rejoicing. With a lot of liters missing. Adulterated diesel. So I said, a few days ago, when somebody told me I could get diesel for 150 naira, I rejected the proposal. And I said, no, that can't happen. That the best you could get is 145. To show you my home belief, I was told that diesel was available for 115. I still went to buy the same day for 125. Because I never would believe, could believe that I would buy diesel for 115 naira. So, I was reminded again that if this is still available for 115, so that I don't become a, doubt, a doubting Thomas. And I said that my staff should go and confirm. It was, the journey was for confirmation. 
And lo and behold, they returned with diesel at 115. Uh, when I saw on the internet that kerosene will be available for 15 air in filling stations, I said they have come with all their gimmicks. Until I saw people moved into filling station and they bought kerosene for 50 naira. Now, <laughs> that means if prior to this time you considered yourself poor and they begin to remove all these excesses little by little, we might even ask for wage reduction generally. <laughs> that means potentially we have not given expression as a nation. We've not done anything with our potentials. There are weights on us. We, we, we rent houses with income that we have not earned. You understand? So we, you, you want to rent a house now, they tell you it's 500,000 per annum and it's for two years and with the fees. Now, you've not earned the money. You've got to go and fetch the money. With the way things are going now, very shortly we step into a new regime where you have to be paying your rent every month. Uh, uh. Then you suddenly look at yourself and say, ah, shame, shame, literally. <laughs> are you with me? In the name of the almighty God, everything that press your potentials down shall be lifted this morning. Barrenness is bad. It, it imposes limitations. It, it doesn't allow people to see the beauty kept inside of you. Until the child comes and they begin to behold the child. Now, nobody, you, you, you had beautiful things in you, but it's not obvious. So nobody sees it. Your potentials are great. But it's not been allowed expression. So little, little, little people will talk you down. People who got a bit of grace will consider you an eternal disgrace. Because the original you is yet to emerge. Barrenness is... It's tough. It makes you feel low at all times. This was a period of Israel's barrenness. It, it, their beauty was concealed. Nobody knew about their greatness. It's a very tough season of limitation. Barrenness is a period of dryness, eating answers, reproach, and provocations, and a feeling of inability. And that people barely survive by reproach. There are different categories of survivors. Some survive by the day. Some are so sure that the future is resolved. Some survive by reproach. You know, she's an house girl. She's in a place where they give her food. But for every meal, an abuse will follow. Olori Buruku. I'm going to hear again. Oh, then you come again. I'm going to say, 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 Yani be true. Kilo ni chembe. Mwaka le mi masa mke mwenye mwenye. Olo ni buruku niye. Shembe yano yako wanisi. Iwa mwade yi. Ay gona apa atu so 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 so. Atu yani. O mwade. Ibolo wa. Yani kishin. Ani kilo ni chembe. 
Mon tu vas écrire mais parce que mon yagbe. Ça a des poupou mami. There are people who survive in reproach. Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 3. They are surviving but they are being reproached. You know, so for everything for everything is like you should just pack it up. And they said to me, the survivors who are left from the captivity in the province are dear, but they were dear in great distress and reproach. They are surviving, but they've been grossly exposed. Their hearts had been wounded. They, they are not as giving expression to their best. But I, I pray today, because you are here, if you are being reproached in any way, today marks an end to your reproach. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, I'm saying again, if there is any form of reproach traceable to your destiny, if you have been reproached in any way, the almighty God has rolled your reproach away. In Joshua chapter 5 verse 9, Joshua took the people to Gilgad. And he said, this, this day I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. And therefore the name of the place shall be called Gilgad. Now, talking about barrenness, the insult it brings, the limitations it brings, and uh, all manner of things, then how do we get to put it behind us? We just touched on Joshua chapter 5 now. If things appear not to be in place, the first thing we do is to circumcise our heart. You just check yourself, deal with yourself first. If you are done dealing with yourself, then you can deal with whatever else comes upon you. Stretch out your boundaries will require a few things. And number one amongst them is to deal with yourself. Resolve your past. Resolve your past. Take the guilt off you. Stop reminding yourself of the things that didn't work. If we offended God in, a, in any way, let's ask for forgiveness. Hosea chapter 10, verse 9 to 12. Hosea 9, 10, uh, 10, 9 to 12. One reason for captivity and the captivity of barrenness. O Israel, you have sinned from the days of Gibeah. There they stood the battle in Gibeah against the children of iniquity did not overtake, in, overtake them. When it is my desire, I will chasten them. People shall be gathered against them. When I bind them for their two transgressions, Ephraim is a trained Ephah that loves to trash grain. But I harness that fear neck. I will make Ephraim pull a plow. Judah shall plow. Jacob shall break his cloth. So for yourselves, righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord till he comes and rains righteousness on you. Stretch out come in to resolve the past and move on again. Now, the crime in Gibeah was a very notorious crime. If you read Judges chapter 19, and 20, you get it. Now, you will think that the children of Israel committed a very great offense. But it appeared very great in the sight of the Lord. They took vengeance into their hands. The Benjamites had uh, more or less raped a woman of Judah. An elderly man took a man and his concubine into safety, custody. And at night, the men of Gibeah came. 
And they were asking the man to release the woman. The old man appealed to them, told them, let me even give you my daughter who is a virgin. Don't commit this atrocity. Uh, but they wouldn't listen to him. Took the woman out, abused her. And uh, when the man returned back to Judah, he simply sliced the woman into 12 and distributed. It was a sign of war. Distributed the pieces to the various tribes of Israel. And when they saw that in Judges chapter 20, they said, we have never seen this kind of a thing before. So they took laws into their own hands. Fought Gibeah. As they were losing, they kept going back to God to re-energize until the Lord gave them victory as it were. So they forcefully acquired victory. But he, he took it against them. And for this reason, Judah couldn't move forward. Ephraim was called a bastard. And God said, well, let me remind you of what you have done. There is no point sitting on the fence. If your ways had not been right, make it right. Then you can now cultivate your fallow grounds. Fallow grounds means a, a land that was formerly useful, but abandoned. Fertilized, good for increase, but abandoned. It was formerly in use, but abandoned for one reason or another. That's the meaning of a fallow ground. Now, if you will resolve certain things, God instantly will put your adversaries to shame. The stiff nakedness, inability to make peace with God is the reason why several destinies are tied down. You are wrong, but in your own eyes, you are right. You are right. So you keep asking God to do it. And God is saying, well, you put yourself into incarceration. So they therefore stumble in their ways by not bringing God into their matter. Judah stumbled. Jacob couldn't move forward. Ephraim was being referred to as a bastard because they did not give consideration to God. Osea chapter 5. Verse 4 and 5. Hosea 5. 4 and 5. Bible says, they do not direct their deeds toward turning to their God. For the spirit of idolatry is in their midst. And they do not know the Lord. The pride of Israel testifies to his face. Therefore, Israel and Ephraim stumble in their iniquity. Judah also Stumbles with them. Prosperity is the first thing on the mind of God. And when we do prosperity meetings, it's not like those energetic things. We got to just get certain things right because now there's an opportunity for periodic review. Why did I pray that God should bless me last month? And it became the worst of all the months. Then why am I here again? You know, it, 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 uh, it, the things we do to people externally, well, may not bother us, but the things that has to do with us should bother us. I, I don't want to labor in vain. I don't know about you. I don't want to beg my enemy for bread. I don't. Not me. Not me. I want to be able to beat my chest that God is my provider. Now, so this goes beyond emotion and sentiment. It goes beyond uh, just screaming and shouting. Now, because on the long run, it will be so obvious that nothing has changed. They do not bring their deeds to God. They had pride. Pride. I've spoken so much about pride and self-righteousness in these past days. Now, if I'm wrong, I simply just must say, I am wrong. Uh, particularly when it has to do with bread. Uh, 
Come with Danny. Come with Danny. Now, if you are fine, you cool. If you can't, you shall suffer, Tony. Oh, I know, she told Oguma, don't you total to a car? Most of them no money, ten year bam, fee, melancholy alone. To one, we alone, kick on, kick on, you are cut you, conju. We alone to bash you live for me. Ma belle foin. On a yoke o tin ya lon no le tepe. Mola nye yon nan ten chi shell lori shi shi le she. O ti chiche fe nyon fun ten years, so oton son fe o ju fifty thousand. O was of un yok kan kun lo ma son we di hundred thousand. Dami ki sha yoto ni ko kwa da yen ni o ye ni hundred thousand. Dami so ti what hundred thousand tepe? Kolo calculate wa. How come he suddenly discover? That you were worth more than 50,000. Now, a lot of us deny ourselves access to what God is graciously provided because of pride. Because of, this is not good. Uh, this might be the reason why God hasn't said yes. Then you are telling him, God, say yes. And you are telling him, I will not leave what I'm doing. And then, why waste time over prayers? Yeah, one I like getting him paid only no for funny me. More than a kidney and issue. You all damn me. One I'd be a young panyo. Only kidney jaw. Jenny only Jenny. One you only wrong. Colon. I only should be your business. Oh, I go work at your dura. Oh, my people told the villa go make you at Jira go mefa. Nino, whether to do to it, not there. Show why you go, what's the villain you go, Walasan? Whatever is in us that is making God turn his way, his eyes off us, by his mercy, shall be resolved here today in Jesus' name. Osea chapter 5, verse 6. Osea 5, 6. Still on the first point. Osea 5, 6. With their flocks and herds, they shall go to seek the Lord, but they will not find him. Why? He has withdrawn himself from them. He has withdrawn himself from them. But when he told you, he said, he said, O jure la unwo baba, maja pa de agba ko la ye. Yen de ni ke, o ju mi kolo unwo, o ni ishe gire la gogo ishe, o ni mongbo. O nka igba te ati akoko, o sha un kolo, un kolo, un kolo, o jure ni mongwo, o ni mi ori ese. I can see you, they, they go out early. They go to seek him. <laughs> but they cannot find him because he already had withdrawn himself. He's taken himself of them. That will not be your lot in the name of Jesus. <laughs> they that seek me early shall find me. And because you've come to seek him very early, particularly concerning your future, it is resolved in the name of Jesus. <laughs> so number two, stretch out who mean to ask for a new direction. Number one, I put the past behind me. Number two, I seek for a new direction. Osea chapter 6 verse 1. Osea chapter 6 verse 1. Come and let us return to the Lord. For he has torn, but he will heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. He dealt with us, uh, but then is able to make things good again. Number three, stretch out your boundaries. Come in, think expansion. Think about bigger things. Think about other ways of doing what you were doing before. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 3 to 5. How can we expand? How can anybody expand? Proverbs 24, 3 to 5. 
True wisdom. A house is built. And by understanding, it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled. With all precious and pleasant riches, a wise man is strong. Yes, a man of knowledge increases strength. So, someone is asking, how can I be bigger than who I am now? It's simply on knowledge. Those who take all our money, iPhone 5, iPhone 6, iPhone 7, iPhone uh, 8. 8 should come out in September. Uh, is it 7? 7. Is it 7? 7. Okay. Now, the reason why you d- normally would like to drop the former one to pick the new one is because they would have added something to it that was not in the former one. And as they keep doing this, Apple will come again to tell us that they have so much money in reserve. That they have not spent. You were using Toyota Camry. Made by Toyota. Sometimes when you open the bonnet. You discover that the engine hasn't changed. But they just put certain things around it. That makes you prefer one to another. I I, I used to ride a a vehicle made in Korea. It's in South Korea. Years back. Brand new. I bought it brand new. Lovely car. But I discovered that (laughs) just with a a trip from here to Akure, once I get to Akure, I'll crash in my hotel room. Already tired. Uh, So I started developing backache at a very young age. Riding brand new car. Uh, Then for the same distance, I would now use a Mercedes Benz. Then I had a Mercedes E4, E420. And when I get to destination, I will be as refreshed. I will be as fresh as I was when I took off. So I went to a doctor. I said, something is wrong with me. You know, if, you, if I had gone to a prophet, the prophet would tell me that there is an arrow. In the other car. That how can I buy a jeep? And I will enjoy it. And when I ride it on this road, everybody says, man, is enjoying. But I was dying gradually in pain. So he checked the seat. Very flat thing like this. Then he said, this one will spoil your back now. I said, this beautiful car. I said, yes. That is not made for long distance. That what these guys have done is to put a very solid engine in a body that is not as perfect. So I said, well, how come each time I drive the Mercedes Benz, I'm always refreshed. So he said to me, he said, it massages your body as you are driving. So I said, show it to me because I, I didn't see anything called the massager. And then when he showed it to me, uh, uh, so I said, so you mean knowledge is the difference? Mm-hmm. So well, I've been wondering, how come this is cheaper than this? There are a lot of features that makes one get resort than the other. Now, you're asking, how will I be better? How can things be better in my life? Knowledge. Knowledge. You are you are not meant to leave the same business. There's nothing wrong with your business. There's nothing wrong with your business. You are just yet to make a discovery on that business. There's nothing wrong. Now, there's not anything absolutely wrong with your marriage. Women used to say that if one had not lived in two men's hours, you can't tell the difference. So the man that you are calling owner of a bad head now, <laughs> you only need to step into a new place and discover that this other one has bad body from head. To <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
People always feel that they are the most miserable. I've always told people, whatever God gives to me is the best. It's the best. The best. Best children, best spouse, best education, best job. Nothing. Best country. This is, my, this is the best country. I'd never stayed in any other country for more than nine days. If I'm traveling, I will tell myself, you break the jeans this time. You stay two weeks. And almost immediately, you know, i shop <laughs> Shipper, I'm telling you. I, I, my wife traveled late last year, so I asked her to help me buy the polo green, you know, the, the polo green perf. Now, I'd gone to Ring Road to look for it. They didn't have green because the green is old. But uh, it has more uh, strength than the, this other pink and purple and the rest of it. So I gave her money to help me do it. Now, only for me to find the same polo green in Nigeria, almost half. You know, there's a way you now spray it and check whether the only for you to know that it's original. But that's what we do on the streets. As a quick wash up a little. But no, 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 no. So, what so What about you So, I now put myself on discipline, money. If I'm traveling, you know, the, 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 I have some of my friends who comes to pick me. There was a day I traveled and I, I called a white guy to come and pick me. He came embarrassing us. He came in a brand new Mercedes-Benz van. And we we're just three, myself, my wife, and my daughter. So he said to us, Nigerians, he said, when Nigerians are coming, they come with light load. <laughs> but when they are returning, they go with a lot of luggage. <laughs> I told my amish or you are Nigoro. Balu Mola Shanji Kakuri. I know that there is nothing God does that is bad. It's only for lack, the disparity is in knowledge. One had come to understand this early enough. I was telling somebody, some people here yesterday as I was preaching, I said, even if the people in Otoke did not vote for Buari, as they were buying kerosene for 50 naira, they will be cursing their son. You know, they will first buy it and cook outside. <laughs> one can Tell one can go with me. On our mom, my father, when we travel, we go really day. When we pay one fifty-six thousand dollars, me, it only one fifty-six thousand. When we get to the airport, we want to come on motel. Until I saw it on Shannes last night, my brother told me, I said, it can never be true. The kilo return here, our my father get a lock. She account in fifteen bands. Can Coca do it, Danny? Man, go away. Be more quick, is she? Shake <laughs> a 
ati n gbe lori ilede nisin ti won ni ki awon 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 are ile igbe ma sofi kan foju bale ejo a mo ko nse kon le se a tell en kan knowledge i'm talking about knowledge onu nje ke eyan to bi si a mo ton ba so pe governor ni immunity a ro pe titi dele mommy en ni amo ti ta won professor sage joko immunity is about the person not the house and so they went into a house they said don't quote me that they found certain things there and everybody kept saying why did they raid it? why did they have to go and raid they have they didn't talk about what they took from there now that means there is no hiding place what it means is that if you have a vault underground where you are keeping dollar now they might simply knock your door and tell you that somebody in the neighborhood said that he saw you when you were bringing boxes in with money and you you think it has to do with an herbalist there are all these pet dogs small dogs sniffer dogs when you travel abroad you see them following you on check it out honestly ko gbe wo pa mo sinu mile kan nu le e ta won aja e ba ti de be won lo mo mo sori won bayi so ki se pe boya fe ma fo le le e a ja won so ke mo tiri o tiri so so igba wo la won yan ni gbowo mi <laughs> so lastly it means breaking new grounds discovering new grounds to stretch out your boundaries simply discovering new grounds there's a very important day that everyone looks forward to is that day when what has been lost will be regained opolo to ni tele ta wa ko de this wa she wa she presentation be ni bi kan wo gan tun ma wora e pe iro ni iwo lo sesa when your strength will come back to you when those who ridiculed you will be the first to rejoice with you that day has come now that's the force that breaks new ground the force that breaks new ground vitality that one am ah ah one that first saw in your door there wa sha mo sukun ma sukun awon yan ro pe kun o fo ni bete kun ayo ni olorun 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 i want to first saw me do mugo mo ni mommy kan wa ba mi love is year 2007 aye ti ni mommy e lara o wa wo le sinu office mi oni pastor e jesus to fun mi o le so to fun mi oni se eyan le ja je ki eyan ma mo oni bo tori gbogbo ari se awon omo mi won le mi ni mo wa ndie oni se eyan oni se eyan le ja je ja je ja so mo te eyan ba ti ba je pe emi olorun to n gbe nu eyan te eyan ba so fun e pe won da je lohun o ke won ga ma press ibu ojo kan be ti gbogbo eniyan reti ti te eyan le so pe ogun ijakule nu aye mi o doro itun o wa si bi loni ojo na de ni oruko jesus ni gbogbo bi ti aye ti lo le rise oluwa yo mo gbe on tutun dide fun o micah chapter 7 message translation let's be hot standing i like us to read then we make just very bold confession and we close micah chapter 7 micah chapter 7 i think verse 11 now let me verse 11 okay micah 7 11 and 12 put the two together i want you to read it then confess it 
the force that helps one to launch out is a force that returns vitality back to one. It says, oh, that, oh, that will be a day. A day for rebuilding your city. A day for stretching your arms, spreading your wings. All your dispersed and scattered people will come back. Old friends and family from faraway places, from Assyria in the east to Egypt in the west, from across the seas and out of the mountain. When is that day coming now? I'll ask you two times. Because by the force of now, Vitality shall return back to you. Amen. The spirit of barrenness will depart immediately. Amen. Fruitfulness will take over in the name of Jesus. What a day. What a day. I want to surround the other side. One in the other by your mirror. You will come back to your own to be. And you can see Shami. I don't want your job. You're a yard. I like it. You're very young. Mundo like it. Je <laughs> Ojo ti wona do bi obi laarin awon omo re Ti won ni won se graduation Ojo ti won ni won ti le fomo loruko because grandpa has in come Awon ojo ti won ni ta lo fe dro ti e tori o sese bi mo ti wa ni maami Sogbo awon ojo ti je pe Go slow, I shall let Nisa Kani be too big. Why want it alone? She can read it. One in one. When is that day going to come? Lift up your two hands and tell him, Father, Father, it is my turn to break new ground. My Lord and my God, let that day be now. Open your mouth, prophesy.